Welcome everyone to today's coffee lecture. Welcome our speaker, Ilio Pellin from the Open Science team from the library. And he will talk about review comments. Thank you for having me here. What I want to talk about today touches on two considerable problems in academic practice. Problem one, as researchers, you have to publish. And of course, you want to publish quickly and not have to wait for months and months and months. On the other hand, there are quality assurance processes that are crucial for scholarly communications. And not to forget, you don't want to fall into the trap of journals with questionable practices. My colleague uh, Andrea Hacker talked about this topic in the last coffee lecture. And finally, when we are talking about publishing, there is also the question of what financing options you have if you don't want to publish in a diamond journal anyway. And the second problem is it's difficult for journals to find reviewers. Maybe some of you have to find reviewers for a journal or a book series uh, you're working for. Others might become sooner or later reviewers themselves. So my talk today may give you an idea of how to become a good reviewer and how to work in a good way, not for commercial publishers, but directly for your research community. In the traditional process, every article that is rejected by a journal and resubmitted to a new journal must newly reviewed. So a lot of voluntary work is done twice or three times or even more. This is a waste of time and work, and of course, we want to avoid that. And the time it takes to find reviewers can also be a problem in a wider context. It can be a serious problem when, for example, research results need to be accessible quickly. We will come to an obvious example in a moment. So in the last couple of years, uh, new forms of publishing and review concepts, new platforms have been developed which might be a, solutions, a solution for these problems. They can be interesting for you as authors and as reviewers. As reviewers on these platforms, you work for the scholarly communication uh, community and not for commercial publisher. And that might be a question of research ethics for you. A manuscript is only reviewed once, in these, uh, on these platforms, regardless of where the article has to appear. We talk uh, about journal-blind reviews in this case. As a reviewer, you will not be bothered with manuscripts that have already been reviewed by someone else. So your precious time as a reviewer is not wasted. And these platforms can be interesting also for you as authors because you can have preprints reviewed. So you have a reliable and citable publication, a publication outside of journals. Or you can submit the already reviewed article to a journal. You have both possibilities. So let's have a look at some examples. A very interesting and quite unique project is a rapid review infectious diseases. In this research field, obviously, preprints are important. Um, in this case, new findings about infectious diseases, time matters not only for authors, as we saw in the COVID pandemic. Important articles have been blocked in the production process of the big medical journeys, and so precious time was lost. Rapid review is an answer, and the name is the program. Rapid review wants to prevent the dissemination of false or misleading scientific information and, secondly, to accelerate the validation and diffusion of robust, impactful scientific findings. And how do they do that? They review simply preprint articles without being asked for. That means the review process is independent of an editorial process. What seems to be important and promising from the scholar's point of view will be reviewed and is approved by the research community. So it's not a publisher which says, 
this is an interesting market. Let's publish 100 special issues. No, it's the scientists who decide what is important for their research. And they will review it independently of a publication in a journal. And that's quite a difference. So we have a new platform here that provides fast and reliable scientific results in a research field where time and scientific qualities are particularly important. Our next example is a very promising one. This platform provides not only journal-blind peer review of preprints, but also public publication options. We're talking about Peer Community In. Peer com Community In, a particular field of research. And there are uh, today uh, 17 PCIs. And how does PCI work? You deposit your preprint on a preprint server, like uh, Archive or Zenodo or Cielo, or an open access repository. Then you choose your PCI and submit your preprint. The submission goes to a recommender who decides to handle an article or not. If the recommender decides to handle the article, he or she initi initiates uh, the peer review process that includes at least two high quality peer reviews. Based on these reviews, the recommender decides to reject the article or recommends it just as it, as it is, or ask the author to revise the article. The review itself is open. That means in this case, the reviews and the author's replies will be published. The reviewers can choose whether they wish to remain anonymous or whether their names will be displayed. After the revision, your article is recommended. That means you have a complete, reliable, and citable article without the need for publication in a tradition, traditional journal. Here you see one of those communities. This is health and uh, movement scientists. And here you see how the review is displayed openly, uh, in these cases with the name of the reviewer, and on the right, you see the managing board of this PCI. And of course, you can also click on recommenders and see the recommenders of this uh, community listed. Another possibility with peer community in is that you choose to publish your article in one of the peer community journals. Peer community journals um, accepted to uh, accepted to accept the articles reviewed on PCI, uh, as long as they fit uh, to their profile. Um, or you submit your article to another journal, which is PCI friendly. Or you take the review and go to another journal with the review and the author's uh, reply. So you have just uh, the review process done once. And you have uh, you can either publish it on the platform itself as a final citable uh, article on the preprint server, uh, or on a community a peer review community journal or another journal. Um, here you see who's who's funding at the platform according to the information on the website. Funding is secured for the next 10 or 15 years, which is, of course, important. You see, funders are mainly um, uh, French ministries for research and um, enseignement teaching. And here are some, just a, a small part of the, of the libraries of the universities who support community in. Another example, um, which is quite similar to PCI's review comments. And what you see here is more or less in line with the objectives of all these platforms. They want high quality journal, independent peer review, in this case, in the life sciences. How does it work? Quite similar. You, um, you submit your paper via Bio archive or med archive to review comments and after the review the article and also the review report 
and the author's answers are published on BioArchive. Or you transfer the article and the review uh, to one of the 23 journals affiliated with Review Commons. Review Commons will allow review reviewers to focus on science and not special uh, on a special specific journal. Uh, they want to enrich the value of preprints as PCI does, and want uh, they want to reduce re-reviewing at multiple journals. And of course, acceleration is also an issue here. That's the process. And these are affiliated journals. The next platform we are looking at is Scient.org. On this platform, this platform was created in the environment of the nonprofit publisher, publisher eLife and aims to make the peer review communities more visible and the articles more accessible. Society is an aggregator for peer review preprints, so you don't have to check all the interesting platforms one by one. You can search Society uh, for keywords, authors, or DOIs, digital object identifiers. You can also scroll through already existing groups or may also create an own group. So this is one of uh, an overview of the groups you have. And you can choose one and see there are 1,008 evalu evaluation on rapid reviews, infectious diseases, for example, and 4,000 on review comments. And you will find, of course, here the PCIs, uh, the communities of the different communities of peer community in. Then, also quite interesting is pre review. You see on the slide that all is underlined, and that refers, of course, to the program of pre-review. It tends to make evaluation in scientific publishing more equitable. The aim of pre-review is to support disadvantaged researchers, especially those researchers in early stage of their careers, and also researchers in low or middle income countries. You submit an article just by inserting the DOI of your preprint here. Your request for a review will, displayed, will be displayed. Reviewers can click on your request and start the review. You are also encouraged to write reviews yourself. You can either click on an article uh, for which a review is requested or you can choose a preprint that you want to review by inserting the DOI in this field. This is an overview of review requests where you can choose one to review. And here you can, um, you can insert a DOI of a preprint you'd like to review. But there can be one problem. You'd like to write a review, but you are not sure whether you know how to write a good review. How do you learn to write a review? Trial and error is probably not appropriate here. And as much as I know, writing a review is not part of scientific writing courses till now. And if I'm wrong here, all the better. But if you want to learn something about writing a review, you find training materials here on pre-review. Pre-review provides workshops for which your institution would have to pay about $1,000 an hour. That's one source of income for pre-review. There is also free training material, for example, the Open Reviewers Toolkit, where you find, among other materials, the Reviewers Guide that provides a step-by-step -step framework for reviewers. So pre-review gives not only a good opportunity for young researchers to have their preprints reviewed, but also to acquire skills and gain experience in reviewing. Not only pre-review, but also the other platforms and concepts I talked about in the last minutes are promising. And maybe you have a closer look at them. This could be interesting. Thank you very much for your attention.